Welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to discuss something quite important with the knee complex biomechanics and in particular with the patellofemoral joint. What is that? That is the patellofemoral joint stress. We know the patellofemoral joint is a highly incongruent joint and there is a greater stress and strain that is happening in the patellofemoral joint. Why is it important? It is quite important because it helps us to understand and learn conditions like patellofemoral pain syndrome and various other pathologies related to the patellofemoral joint. Let me ask you how far the patellofemoral joint stress can go and when is the stress at its maximum? Is it at flexion or at extension or in between this? And finally, let me ask you, how can we tackle this stress? And is it only important that we tackle the stress? And what about the factor known as the stability of the patellofemoral joint in the frontal plane? This session explains about the patellofemoral joint stress and later the stability of the patellofemoral joint in particular. The time codes are given below if you want you can check back to any particular topics and here we discuss the patellofemoral joint stress. femoral joint stress okay to understand patellofemoral joint stress we need to remember first that the patellofemoral joint is highly incongruent it is specifically because of the small articular area and the location particular location of the patella which do not have much body contact when it is at extension right yes and to understand this topic, we need to take a few things to our mind, that we need to understand few facts. First one is, what is joint stress? Okay, what is joint stress? Joint stress is force by area. The area means the surface area of contact. Force means the muscular force of the muscles. So joint stress will increase as per the situation if the force increases. Very good, right? It will also increase if the area decreases. Good. And at the same time, the joint stress can decrease, okay, when the force decreases or the area increases. And even if the force remains a constant, if the surface area increases, the joint stress can decrease, right? As per this equation, you know about the mathematics, yes. Once again, the joint stress is actually the force per area. And area, uh, when the force is increasing and the area decreases, the joint stress can increase, okay? If the force alone increases, if the force alone increases, then too, what can happen? the joint stress can increase okay if this is increasing and dec decreasing in a reciprocal manner or in the same manner it won't decrease or increase much other conditions that we are saying okay leave it about the mathematics and here and when the force decreases okay the area uh, and the area increase the joint stress can increase and more clearly when the surface area increase the force can decrease that's what we have to understand that is the when the force increases the joint stress can increase when the surface area decreases area decrease the force can decrease okay these are the things that we need to take into our mind prior to our discussion in this one the second one is a much more important thing that is the line of pull of line of pull of quads and patella tendon quads and patella tendon the line of pull of quads and patella tendon let us see with the help of a diagram okay you know that uh, if this is our knee joint right like this okay if this is our knee joint right like this we know we have here our patella very good yes you have the patella tendon connecting to the here and you have the quadriceps tendon connecting to here. Okay. So naturally there is a balance of the force between the quadriceps pull and the patella tendon pull. Okay. 
and superior pull is by the quadriceps and inferior pull is by the patellar tendon and this is going to help this is going to help your knee joint to or patella to remain in an ideal position right yes very good but you must remember that the line of pull of the both those muscles is not in a straight line the line of pull of quadriceps and the patella tendon is not in a straight line why that is because these are not arranged the femur and the tibia is not parallel to each other because we know that there is a physiological valgus existing over here there is a physiological valgus the medial and curation existing for the femur so remember the line of the pull of both this quadriceps and parallel tendon are not going to intersect each other right very good you got it right yes that's a third second thing that you should remember and the third thing the joint stress can change or decrease when knee angle decreases or knee flexion increases as knee flexion increase okay or knee angle increases or decreases it can influence the joint stress this are just prior discussion the topic is much interesting than this okay the joint stress is one thing the line of pulls of quads and parallel tendon is another thing and the knee angle all this you will understand in the next discussions upcoming discussion knee flexion angle how it will affect we will see in later okay we'll see later yes very good all right and I tell you that this topic is important because if you want to understand the challenging pedal of femoral pain syndrome, we need to have a very crucial understanding of this topic, right? Yes, let's move on to the pedal of femoral joint stress. The pedal of femoral joint stress can be classified or found out in two regions that is, in the extension, when full extension is there when full flexion is the or flexion is the okay these are the two situation in which we are going to assess the patellofemoral joint stress yes let's move on to extension and um, this is our okay our knee joint in extension yes this is our knee joint in extension and you have the patella tendon over here you have the patella ten, patella over here and patella is attached to with the help of patella tendon to the tibia right it is attached to the quads we are uh, the quadriceps tendon quadriceps tendon very good very good yes and you know that uh, ex ex take this as a lateral view okay Take this as a lateral view then it will clear you the things much more easily okay let it be a lateral view and here you know that the line of gravity is actually passing slightly anterior to the knee joint okay slightly anterior to the knee joint and this one is producing an extension moment over here we started it earlier in the frontal plane it is providing an extension moment at the okay when extension moment is there, the quadriceps action is less because without the activity of the quadriceps, the knee joint is able to achieve its extension, not completely, but to a great extent. The mechanism of that we have already discussed. If you want to know about that, look back into the previous video. I will give the link in the um, link above. Yes, that's it. So the quadriceps muscle, so that's the point here, the quadriceps action is less, the quads action is less. Line of gravity is passing anteriorly. It is providing an extension moment, extension moment, which is decreasing the quadriceps activity. Now you see the line of action of this muscle. This is the line of action of this muscle. This is the line of action of this strengthen. And when we resolve that with the parallelogram method like this, we see its resultant is into the joint. We see its resultant is into the joint. And this is the resultant that is producing the joint compression. And this is the resultant that is producing the joint compression. And this is what we is producing the joint stress. The patellofemoral joint stress at the extension is provided by the resultant of the pull of quadriceps and the patellar tendon, right? If you want to know more, we need to see about the flexion. Then you will, when then we can compare both of that. Yes, very good. Suppose if we imagine a person has gone for a bit of flexion like this. Okay, knee flexion. 
right what happens when that patient where what happens when that person move on to knee flexion what happens can you predict yes the line of gravity will pass posterior to his knee joint very good the line of gravity passes posterior to his knee joint and you have here the patella here you have the quadriceps tendon uh, the quadriceps you have over here the pull the patella tendon pull you have over here right yes the line of gravity is passing posteriorly when line of gravity is passing posteriorly what happens it is providing an flexion moment and that flexion moment has to be balanced by your quadriceps it has to be balanced by your quadriceps that means your activity of the quadriceps increases your quads increases very good yes and now you see when we resolve this force vectors like this and this like this and legs okay what happens we see that the resultant is highly directed into the joint cavity we get a large resultant as compared to this one right that is because the angle of flexion increases or flexion increases or the knee joint angle decreases from 180 degree or zero degree extension into a flexion the flexion angle increases now you imagine the situation now let us predict from the situation that here the quartz activity is less quartz activity is less here the quartz activity is high yes area of contact over here and the remains somewhat same okay but of course during flexion the area of contact is increasing but it is very negligible compared to this quadriceps activity so we don't have to look into this area of contact now what is our equation of the joint stress joint stress is force by area force by area you see this force decreasing here the force is high so that means we can conclude at knee flexion the patellofemoral joint stress is at its maximum and as knee flexion increases the patellofemoral joint stress is going to increase and increase and increase and it is going to affect your patellofemoral joint alternate your back man good yes that's our discussion that's our discussion that the uh, attraction and extension the battle of humeral joint is quite different uh, having quite having quite different stress and at flexion the stress increases it's basically because the line of gravity moves backward producing a flexion moment which has to be balanced by your quadriceps it increases the activity of your quadriceps right yes at the same time the knee flexion angle decreases which increases the line of pull or which increases the resultant of your quadriceps muscle activity right yes that's our conclusion that the at flexion the patellofemoral joint stress is very high compared to extension very good yes and sometimes in flexion in initial degree of your flexion the quads need not be active or there is a situation when the quads is inactive you think even then this will happen that is because passively the quadriceps is going to act okay it will act as passive restraint and that passive force of the quadriceps is in fact very large and produce the joint stress of course we have to forget about or we have to um, remove we have to uh, just not we don't we don't have to consider about the surface area in contact because here you know that the surface area definitely increases to extension flexion but uh, that surface area do not have a great impact as the quadriceps activity but it has an impact we will see that again so that means we can conclude that the patellofemoral joint stress is maximum at flexion and thus at the decrease at the extension. At about 20 degree of flexion, okay, the patellofemoral joint stress increases to 25 to 50 degree of your body weight, 25 to 50 percentage of your body weight. At about um, a normal walking, okay, normal walking, it increases or uh, sorry, normal running at the time of running, this is walking we have a flexion angle of 20 to 30 degree it increases to 10 times your body weight and at deep squat activity which is very dangerous as far as your patella is considered it increases much more than the 10 times the body weight that is your conclusion that is 20 degree 20 degree it increases 25 to 50 percentage normal range of a uh, normal walk uh, running it increases to 10 percentage or uh, deep uh, squat activity manifestly increases the patellofemoral joint stress now 
of course the joint stress if it is increasing too much in the flexion we might have a great deal of a, what you call um, a great deal of degenerative changes and a great problems when flexion increases but flexion is a natural phenomenon we have to move for the flexion then body should have some defense mechanism to prevent that stress we are going to see it and remember as a hint as a tip that uh, the patellofemoral joint stress is maximum at the medial facet because of the small contact of the patella in the medial facet and of course the medial compartment of the knee is having a great deal of stress and strain and its large surface area etc all these factors makes the medial facet suffering a great deal of force and stress and compression right yes very good what are the strategies to decrease the joint stress what are the strategies to decrease the joint stress we have four methods okay we have four methods right the first one is of course the self articular surface area articular surface area the second one is the cartilage covering cartilage covering very good okay the third one is the quads action quads action yes and the fourth one is the quantiles of the femur of femur okay now let us see how all this is going to decrease your patellofemoral joint stress the first one is articular surface area you know that uh, uh, the surface area increases from extension to flexion the contact in surface area increases from extension to flexion when the area of contact increases joint stress decreases so this has a slight roll this has a slight roll okay this has a slight roll of course a slight roll this increase in the surface area the second one is the articular cartilage we see that articular cartilage in the medial face are lining the patella and the medial face is a very thick one is a very thick one and thickest in the human body this hyaline cartilage is thickest in human body one among the thickest one so that you can reduce the stress and friction it again reduce the stress and friction very good right the articular cartilage which is covering the patella and specifically around the medial facet which is having the greatest one the medial facet the articular cartilage is very thick and next one is the quadriceps action how because you know that as flexion increases 20 to uh, 20 degree onwards okay the patella is going to act as a pulley when patella act as a pulley what happens the momentum of the quadriceps increases the momentum of quadriceps increase if momentum is increasing quadriceps has to work less right you know that yes the efficiency of the muscle increases if the momentum is increased so the momentum is increased quadriceps has to work less and when it is working less less compressive force that is here the patella act as uh, reducing the momentum of uh, the quadriceps muscle momentum of mu increasing the momentum and are, uh, as a result decreases the muscle activity you know that this right Yes, when momentum increases, uh, when quadriceps is acting as a pulley, um, says the patella is acting as a pulley, it increases the momentum. When momentum increases, muscle has to work less. And lastly, the condyles of the femur, you know that they are having a convex shaped structure. So this is going to deflect some of the force line of the quadriceps muscle. Deflection by the, deflection by the condyles, yes. The condyles are actually going to deflect the line of the forces and thus decreases the contact area. Not just deflect, the quadriceps tendon is coming in contact at certain point with the condyles at extremes of flexion. Okay, when patella moves into the femoral sulcus or sorry, in the condylar nose. And at that time, the quadriceps tendon is actually coming in contact with the uh, patellar tendon, pat uh, sorry, femoral condyles. When it comes in contact with the femoral condyle, it's going to get rubbed over with the, and that can produce some friction. The friction can ultimately reduce the force of quadriceps muscle. Can we just summarize this one? Yes, these are some body strategies to decrease the patellofemoral joint. One is the articular surface. When articular surface decreases, the patellofemoral joint can decrease. The cartilage in the medial facet and patella is higher in cartilage, which is very thick, and more higher in cartilage, less friction, less friction, less joint stress. 
and the quadriceps action it acts as a pulley which one the patella decrease increases the momentum thereby decreases the muscle action when the muscle force decreases or force of contraction decrease joint stress decrease lastly the condyles of the femur which are convex in shape is going to deflect the lines of quadriceps muscle and at the same time at extremes of flexion this condyles comes in contact with the patella to quadriceps tendon and thereby there is some sort of friction between this one this friction is actually decreasing the ability of muscle muscular contraction by the quadriceps to some degree all these factors are contributing in slight decrease um condyle and decreases the joint stress very good so that is how the body has a defense mechanism or a mechanism a compensatory mechanism to reduce the joint stress and finally we want to see two conditions which we already discussed that is the patellar alta and patellar baja Alta means what? Patla is a high riding patla. This is a normal position and patla is high. Uh, Baja means it is down. When patla is high, what happens? Okay? You know that uh, the patellofemoral joint should move into the intercondylar nodes. That will be delayed. The contact between patella and the quadrus, the femoral condyles decreases. When contact decreases, that means surface area won't, won't decrease that much or won't increase that much. That means in patella alta, the joint stress is high. Whereas in baja, you know that this can move fastly into the intercondylar nose. When it is moving down, 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 the contact between the femoral sulcus and the patella increases. And when this contact increases, increases, surface area of the contact increases. And what happens if the surface area increases? Joint stress decreases. So in patella baja, the joint stress decreases fast or decreases at first itself whereas in alta the contact between femoral sulcus and the patella do not increases because you know that it's already in a high position so this has to come to here and from here to here then only the contact increases so that it takes some time and thus increases the joint stress and that's all about the joint stress what about the joint stability in the frontal pain do you think that we need to only bother about this uh, joint stress of course stress is dangerous uh, joint compression is dangerous, but that is in the long run. What about the stability, which is very important at the present scenario, at every second, every instant? Let us discuss about that. Yes, now we are going to discuss about the frontal plane stability. Why is it important to discuss the frontal plane stability? That is quite important because the frontal plane stability and the stress and the compression are correlated. And you will understand at the end of this discussion. See, at this point, you know that the um, quadriceps muscle and the patella tendon do not act in a straight line i already told you that is because of the physiological valgus these are not coming to be in a straight line so what is the net force of this one okay the resultant of this one will be directed this line this way that is will be directed laterally that means already always in extension always in extension there is a lateral pull or there is a lateral pull by the quadriceps muscles action re resultant action of the quadriceps muscle that means at extension the quadriceps muscle is going to exert a lateral pull on the patella which provides or which contributes to the instability of the patella but at the same time you must remember in extension the joint stress is less joint stress means less because means quadriceps action is less okay the surface area of contact is also less this totally makes the frontal plane an instable one frontal plane is instable okay frontal plane is instable the quadriceps action is less means it is less compressed into the joint if it is more compressed into the joint that means it could have given its more strength so we saw earlier that compression or stress is less at extension that is good for our body but at the same time the frontal plane stability is less at the extension which is very bad and can produce dislocation and subluxation of the patella right so this you see the reciprocal relationship of that at the same time you can imagine in the flexion the uh, lateral pull decreases at about 20 degree the quadriceps line changes and that can increase the 
um pull of the quadriceps at the same time it can increase the quadriceps muscle action the action increase the surface area increase and line of pull changes at about 20 degree of flexion and more that means at flexion the stability is high the stability is high you know that you already the stability is high at extension the stability is less very good very good we got that picture right can we uh, once again just summarize that? That is at extension, there is a lateral pull of the quadriceps muscle because the line of action do not coincide each other. This is the lines of the quads. This is the line of action of patella tendon. And the uh, re resultant of this is this direction and this is this direction. And it's a resultant by the parallelogram method. We get it as a lateral. So there is a lateral pull of the patella tendon in this direction. The lateral pull is providing a chance for lateral subluxation or lateral displacement of the patella. Okay, so that means in extension the stability is less. Also, not only this lateral pull along with the weakness of the quadriceps muscle or less force of the quadriceps means less joint compression that also produce the instability. Also, surface area is also less that also is contributing to the instability. Whereas in flexion, you know that the surface area increase, the flexion angle increase, the quadriceps action increase. The stability is high at the flexion. So earlier we discussed that. Um, at flexion, the compression has to be minimized by, by some strategy. Now here the problem is at extension. At extension, the problem should be rectified by some strategies. What are that? This includes the passive stabilizers or stabilizer of patella. You know that there are two stabilizers. One is the longitudinal stabilizers and transverse stabilizers longitudinal and transverse stabilizer for the patella at the extension okay see here okay this is the patella this is the patella tendon this is the quad tendon the longitudinal stabilizers are the passive and active stability by the quadriceps of course quadriceps is producing some stability whatever it is if there is no activity of the quadriceps it can provide problems okay at the same time the inferior pull by the patella tendon and at the same time, you have the patellotibial ligaments, the patellotibial ligaments. So these are the frontal plane stabilizers in the longitudinal direction. That is the quads tendon, quads, that is the patellar tendon, patellar tendon, that is the longitudinal patella, patellotibial ligaments, patellotibial ligaments. Okay, you know that the quads tendon can be either active or in passive. Okay, either active or in passive. In extension, it is more like passive because it is having uh, less action. So these are passive stabilizers in the longitudinal direction. So this provides a stability in longitudinal direction to provide or prevent medial and lateral patella displacement or um, superior and inferior patella displacement. Right? This is one of the first important stabilizers that the longitudinal stabilizers. And then the transverse stabilizers. You know that um, there is an extensor retinaculum. There is, you know that here you have the retinacular fibers. Here you have the retinacular fibers and uh, other menisco femoral ligaments. This is the medial patello femoral ligament. This is the lateral patello femoral ligament. So this medial and lateral patello femoral ligaments, which are part of the extensor retinaculum and medial retinaculum of the patella, is providing medial and lateral stability. This becomes the transverse stabilizers. You know that this is attached to which muscle? This is attached to the vastus medialis. Very good. And this is attached to the vastus lateralis as well as to the IT band. So medial patella femoral lig lig uh, ligament is attached to vastus medialis. This is attached to vastus lateralis plus the IT band. So this is providing the passive stabilization or active stabilization in transverse plane. So you have a longitudinal stabilizers which prevent this sort of movements and displacement of the patella. You have transverse stabilizers which will provide median and lateral stability and prevent patella from displacing laterally. That is once again the transverse stabilizers are the medial patellofemoral ligament that is attached to the vastus medialis the lateral patello femoral ligament which is attached to the vastus medialis uh, vastus lateralis and the IT band this one is providing a compressive force in both ties like acting as a bow tie okay like acting as a gear ropes and thus preventing what you call the displacement of the patella in either of the direction this is all about the stability of the patella we see that the both topics are contradictory stress is high in flexion and it is going degenerative problems 
the stability is less in extension it has to be balanced so we have two strategies one inflection and extension both at this both joints both at this stability and compression to balance this one and uh, to summarize i would like to tell you that the quadriceps muscle is not a complete and not a single one it is acting actually four muscle groups and you know that each of them has line of pull medialis has a medially directed lateralis has a laterally directed so quadriceps muscle has a very critical role in stability of the patella okay medial and lateral stability of the patella and this quadriceps is weak it can provide medial and lateral stability issues to the patella so always quadriceps has a greater role in medial and lateral stability as well as providing a compressive force which will increase the frontal plane stability of the patella okay now we summarize our discussion that the stress and uh, stability is contraindicated uh, co control related that is uh, reciprocally related of course when there is less compression there is less uh, greater stability uh, less compression there is less stability when there is a compression is higher man what if, which is disadvantages to our body and causing degenerative problems the stability is also higher okay what our body needs to know what our body needs to adapt we have to we will discuss that later now we summarize this discussion for now and see you in the next video if you like this video don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to my channel